Hi, this is Pete Lyons with Let's Play Salesforce, and today we're going to talk about combining multiple streams in a single query using the cogroup function. So first, let's take a look at the use case that we're going to attempt to address with cogroup. So let's start by creating a, a step on my opportunity data set. I'm going to group it by industry. I'm going to aggregate my sum of amount, and I'm going to sort by that descending. Put that guy on the screen. And next, we're going to have a nice little list filter over here where we're going to filter by account type. And notice how energy is number one, consulting is number nine. But if I filter by only partner, we see the consulting jumps up to three and energy drops to six. And I don't want that to happen. I want to preserve this ordering even after I've applied my filter. So let's take a swing at using the compare table to address this. So first, I'm going to switch to compare table mode. And I'm going to add a calculated column. I'm going to hit edit column and the plus sign. And I'm going to use a simple rank within group function using the default options, hit close. And I'm going to say that that is what I want to sort by. Sort by that, I want to sort by that ascending and then switch back to table mode, and I got a bar chart. So this is now showing me all of those, uh, those same uh, industries, but now I can see how, that, uh, how they're ranked, and that's how I want them to stay ranked. So let's try uh, applying our filter now. Oh no, it didn't work. The, uh, the ranking seemed to have adjusted itself. Now, why is that? Now, if we were to explore this, and then switch to SACL mode, we can see that the filter is being applied before the ranking function is being applied. So that means that the ranking is being applied on our filtered result table and not based on our original query prior to the filter, which is really what we want. So now how are we going to fix this? We're going to fix it with cogroup. So we're almost ready to start building out our query. Last thing that we need to do is steal the sack wool that this actually generated. I'm going to copy that onto my clipboard. And now we can start building our sack wool step. So we're basically to reproduce the same thing. I'm going to group by industry. Um, and I'm going to sort it descending by sum of amount. And I need to put in a placeholder filter so that we can swap this out with a binding later on to get the step to behave the way we want. So we take a look at this sack wool. It's actually much, much simpler. And above this, I'm going to paste in my other query. So now we're ready to get uh, started streamlining and grafting these two different queries into one query that is co-grouped together. So uh, let's see what we need to do first. First, we need to address uh, these variable names and our load stream. So I'm already loading Q equals load opportunity up at the top. I don't need this again here down at line 10. So I'm just going to get rid of that. Uh, I'm also going to get rid of the limit statements because I don't really need them in there either. And now uh, I'm going to need to change out all the variable names down below. So I'm going to switch everything here to Q2. And I'm not going to change the second instance of Q on line 11, where it says Q2 equals filter Q by account type equals partner. And the reason why is because I do want that to still take my load statement from line one as its input. Uh, so now if we go ahead and just hit run, it's only going to show us the lower query, uh, which is fine. You know, that's all we need right now. We're, uh, we haven't co-grouped them together yet. So once we start co-grouping things together, uh, we're going to need from there forward to declare which one of those uh, tables we're actually calling out because we're going to create a table that's really effectively kind of an overlap of the two. So next we're going to go Q3. Q3 equals cogroup result by account industry and Q2 by account industry. 
Now, what would actually happen if we just hit run right now? Well, it doesn't know what we're projecting. So it knows, well, I've got 20 rows now for the 20 different industries that I've co-grouped together. But other than that, I don't really know what to project. So we do need to give it a new for each statement. Q equals for each Q3 generate. Now, normally at this point, I would say give me my account industry as my account industry. But now I have two different streams that both have account industry. I have my Q2s and I have my result. Well, which one do I want? I want my Q2s. I also need some kind of measure in here. Now, normally I would say give me sum of mount as sum of mount. But I can't do that because for one thing, I've already cast my sum of amount as sum underscore amount. So it doesn't know about that anymore. So now I have to tell it, give me the sum of sum amount. And the other thing is it too needs to know what stream that column is coming off of and it's on stream Q2. So let's take a look at just what we have so far. Will this actually run? And yes, it's now producing those same filtered values that we saw before. And it's also uh, another change that it's made is it is sorting them alphabetically uh, because we haven't declared any kind of ordering for this. So let's get one more value in here. And now we're actually going to pull off the other uh, stream. So give me the sum of my result streams column B as B. So there are those rankings that we, uh, we have from before. So now let's see if we can order by those. And there we have it. Now energy is at the top, even though our filter of Q equals filter Q by account type equals partner, it's still showing up at the top. And we still have uh, consulting down at number nine. So now we can go ahead and get rid of this visualization. And let's see what happens when we put our lens one on the screen. Well, there it is. We've got uh, all the filters applied that we we wanted. We're filtering by uh, account type equals partner, and we're preserving the order that we want. Uh, but we're not we're not finished yet. We do need to make this cooperate better with this account type filter. So let's see what happens right now. If we were to switch and filter by account type equals partner, we lose that ordering. And why is that? If we were to explore this, we can see what happens. So what happens is it applied the, the filter through faceting to our original Q equals load opportunity stream. And we ran into the same problem we had before which, mean, which is that this filter was being applied before the ranking. So we're going to need to address that. And how do we do that? Well, first, we're going to tell this step, I do not want you to accept filters uh, from, from other steps through faceting. So let's see if that does anything. Okay, well, now it ignores the filter entirely. But uh, we don't want it to ignore the filter. We want it to obey the filter, but we only want it to obey the filter on that second stream that doesn't actually create our ranking. And now we're going to need to bind to it. So now we're going to uh, hop into our dashboard JSON. I'm gonna zoom in for you. And this filter is what we're gonna need to be binding onto. Q2 equals filter Q by account type double equals partner. And I'm going to just create a little white space so I got some room to work with here. And uh, let's create our binding that we're going to replace that with. So binding is always going to have uh, double curlies here. And we're going to want to do the column function. And we're going to want to pass that in as a string. String takes no arguments. Column takes two. Uh, we're also going to need to do a coalesce because if nothing is being returned back from our source step, 
we want to make sure that we're not just returning a null. The colesque in this case is going to take two arguments. It's going to take our input function and it's going to take a uh, alternative return. So that alternate return is just going to be all. And next we can build out uh, our columns. Second part of column is going to be what column it is that's going to need to be in the form of an array. And I'm going to put the little placeholders in there. So this is where our column name is going to go. And over here, we need our step name as a selection. And what is our step name? It is account underscore type underscore one. And then over here, what is the name of the column that we want to grab the selection of? Count dot type. Now we're ready to put our completed binding into the query. And this is going to be replacing our filter right here. And we also need to change the double equals to an in because there may be multiple values returned and all of this is going to get passed in as an array. So now we zoom back out and hit done, we may in fact be done. So let's take a look. When I filter by partner, energy remains first, consulting remains ninth, and we actually filter these amounts. I can also filter by customer. I can filter by, uh, you know, I can, I can set this guy to uh, multi-select on the step, and I can select both and get back to my uh, original unfiltered query. Uh, so yeah, looks like it's working. This is by no means uh, an exhaustive exercise in everything that we can do with uh, co-group and also even just group. And you should definitely check out the docs on this. Um, once you've uh, kind of mastered this basic example and you're ready to move beyond it, we do have the ability to uh, give different expressions for left, right, and full. And this is kind of, uh, you know, if you're familiar with SQL, this is going to give you your different um, inner and outer grouping functions to decide what to do when rows exist in one stream and not the other. Uh, you are not limited to grouping two streams. You can group as many streams as you want. Um, there's also uh, different syntaxes that are acceptable for uh, your stream identifiers and uh, really useful doc. You're definitely going to want to check this out. Um, by no means is this video meant to be an all-encompassing explanation of what you can do with co-group. It's really just a meant, uh, meant to get the ball rolling for you. And with that, we conclude this chapter of SACWL Basics. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Uh, so if you did, please like, subscribe, tell a friend, and as always, thanks for watching.